Hey everybody, Scott here with MotivatedCodePro.com. Thanks for coming. Today I'm going to talk about my top 10 programming languages for 2018 and 2019. That is the Motivated Code Pro Top 10 for 2018 and 2019. Okay, at the MotivatedCodePro.com website we've put together a blog post and within that we have a matrix that details out 10 popular websites top 10 programming languages. That's a mouthful. So basically we have like Stack Overflow, Hacker Noon, uh, Simple Programmer, TOV, and more. All of the top 10s from those sites laid out and in addition to ours, in addition to mine. So thank you for coming again. If you're new to, if you're new to programming, I want you to keep JavaScript in mind because all of the code camps, colleges, and programs that you can enroll in are generally taking you in that direction and the industry is clearly moving in that direction. If you've been programming for a while, as you watch the video, I want you to keep in mind the programming language or languages that is that are getting you paid today because that really matters. Motivated Code Pro is about helping you live your best software life and we have special emphasis on consulting and contract programming. So with that in mind, let's get started on the top 10 programming language list of 2018 and 2019. Stay with me. Shut up and sit down. Okay, number 10, coming in at number 10 is an old favorite for a lot of people, which is C. And C is still really widely used, uh, particularly for embedded systems, operating systems, graphics, games, you name it. Um, you know, if you go back a ways, anytime uh, you were in a computer science program, C was going to be involved. You were going to take at least a semester or more of C. So that comes in at number 10 for me. I think it. I think it's the, the root in some ways of a lot of the things that we work on today. But it's also used to develop for the development of other languages. Coming in at number 9, C++. And no surprise there really, a superset of C, a bit of a wider uh, audience in terms of programming opportunities, both from a job standpoint, a consulting and contract programming standpoint. A lot of the same things, embedded systems, operating systems, um, you know, new languages are built on C++, and a lot of applications are built on C++ still. Um, just so much is done with C++, and you know, some of the really big sites, uh, you know, Google, uh, Yahoo, YouTube, and, and so many more that I could not possibly list. Somewhere in their infrastructure and somewhere in what makes the magic happen for those sites is C++. And so I think if you're looking to learn a new language, uh, C++, can, you can't go wrong with it. And, and I think the thing that I love about it is there's still a ton of jobs out there. When I was researching this, I was really, really surprised. I don't program in C++ day to day, but it sure looks like a lot of people are, and I don't think you can go wrong. It comes in at number nine for me. Number eight, Swift. And when I think of Swift, I think of mobile, and I think of Apple, of course, because Swift belongs to Apple. And Swift is said to be Objective-C without the C. No memory management, no pointers, easy to learn, and a lot of momentum from Apple and a lot of uh, encouragement from Apple itself for developers to get in there and learn Swift. Uh, many, many apps built on Swift now, and Swift uh, c compiles down to, you know, creating a native app. Anyway, so Swift coming in at number eight for me. Some really big um, applications built with it, like Firefox iOS and WordPress iOS, just to name two. And I think on the Android side, of course, Java, right? So when you think of, you know, Apple mobile, you tend to think of, you know, um, Android mobile, and with Android, of course, there's Java, and we'll talk about that here in a few minutes as well. So that is number eight, Swift. Moving on to number seven, PHP. You know, what can be said about PHP? Still widely, widely used. Today. Some of the biggest sites on earth are built on PHP at their core. You think about Facebook, you know, every WordPress site on the planet, uh, Wikipedia, Tumblr, I'm looking at my notes, so if you're wondering. Anyway, there's so much done with PHP, and I, a lot of frameworks there. Let's see, Laravel, Symfony, Falcon, Xen. And so when there are a lot of frameworks around a language, that, that implies a certain popularity and a certain use in the population. Frameworks are interesting because, you know, they solve a lot of problems, and they're meant to speed development and to create 
a repeatable pattern in the software development process and so that's what frameworks are about in my personal opinion and I and I work in you know frameworks every single day so I I feel like uh, frameworks solve three or four problems and introduce one so the math is good uh, but keep in mind it doesn't come for free it's never easy frameworks are always a challenge uh, but they do speed development and add a lot to the best practices of the things that you're building so PHP coming in at number seven for me it's been around since 1994 it's not going anywhere I think it's always a good investment easy-ish to learn so that's PHP number seven number six Python Python's been around since 1991 and has just grown in popularity over the last several years. If you watch the landscape at all, you're probably amazed at like Python, man. It's, Python is everywhere. People use it for scripting, for math, and for scientific, for web development and application development on the web. Um, just so much going on there for GUI development as well. A lot getting done there. A lot of jobs there. And like I said at the beginning, you know, for for motivated code pro. My push is to work on things that are going to get you paid and keep you paid and are going to be relevant tomorrow, right? So don't invest a ton of time in something that's a guess for you. And Python is one of those things that's been around a long time. It's just growing in popularity and you cannot go wrong, you know, to add that to your workbench or to, uh, to the, your, your list of things that you know and are comfortable with. So again, focus on things that are going to get you paid. Python is certainly one of those coming in at number six. Number five, C Sharp. So C Sharp has the benefit of being integrated with the entire Microsoft stack, you know, SQL Server, Visual Studio, Foundation Server, and it's all beautifully integrated. And so, so when you when you work with C Sharp, generally, I know there are exceptions to this and it runs in Linux, but the thing is, you generally have a beautiful integration with the rest of the development environment. And that's something that I think uh, hurts some of the other things that we're going to talk about coming up. So, so C Sharp coming in at number five for me, you have the benefit of Microsoft. Clearly, it's not going anywhere. Clearly, there's a huge population. Um, in, in, in the C Sharp world and around .NET in general. And C Sharp just continues to grow in popularity and to be something that people come back to time and time again. It's said to be Microsoft's answer to Java. I tend to fall into that belief as well, but I don't think you can go wrong. Uh, people are, are making money with it and you can too. Number five, C Sharp. Number four, Java. What can be said about Java? Still one of the most popular languages on the planet and one of my personal favorites. I work in it every day. Lots of good frameworks for that, but generally when we think about frameworks for Java, we think about Spring, we think about Hibernate, and, and there are some others and things that come and go, but Java just has an enormous um, programmer population and businesses corporate america has really invested the world as corporate goes has really invested and believes in java uh, oracle has continued to pour emphasis into java and to integrate with its with its products uh, it's not going anywhere i i certified as a sun java programmer in the year 2000 and i've never regretted that it's been a huge boon to, to my personal career our consultancy at pinch hitter solutions is built in, in part around programming in java so i can't say enough about it if you're looking to learn a new language this is definitely one you can learn and what i say about java is the object oriented model that Java brings to the table is borrowed in other places by certain JavaScript frameworks and other things. You can you can you can only benefit from the use of Java. And Java can do everything. There's nothing that Java can't do. Everything from web development to application development without the web, uh, embedded systems. Your refrigerator might be running on Java today, and, and your car stereo, and, and all of, a lot of fancy stuff um, built with Java. Huge adoption from. The, you know, all of the embedded systems kind of thinking, Java's really made its way into that. One of the best programming languages ever, in my personal opinion. Number four, Java. Number three, JavaScript. No surprise there, right? So this is JavaScript for the back end, and I want to talk about that for just a minute. So JavaScript for the back end, um, Node.js and Express.js and Happy.js and a whole bunch of frameworks, the NPM ecosystem and Node Package Manager, this is huge and people have really come to adopt uh, JavaScript as a back-end, a viable, Java, uh, viable back-end alternative. 
to some of the traditional things like the other languages that we've mentioned, and particularly Java, you know, C Sharp, Python, PHP, all of those kind of back end uh, languages. Uh, Node.js has just it's just creeping up on all of those, and creeping may not be the right word, it's much faster than that. Huge uptake, huge popularity, the schools are teaching it, um, the code camps and, and those kinds of places are teaching it. Uh, I like it, I think it, I, you know, I, I think, you, again, you can't go wrong. If you're just getting started in programming, I always point people to JavaScript because more and more you can do anything with JavaScript, front end, back end. And so coming in at number three for me is JavaScript on the back end. Stay with that one. You can't go wrong. And add to the no no, sorry, NoSQL databases like MongoDB and CouchDB and a whole host of others. Uh, just a lot of stuff around JavaScript on the back end coming in at number three for me. Number two, JavaScript for the front end. Huge, huge, huge in popularity. Uh, React.js, AngularJS, EXTJS, uh, Vue and Ember, and so many um, camps in the JavaScript frameworks on the front end. A lot of it's just, these are like um, so. There's been so much adoption to so many frameworks. They all they're almost like languages unto themselves. I mean, you have to know core JavaScript to adopt the usage of a JavaScript framework. Uh, but once you do that and you move into a particular framework, uh, it's just kind of its own thing. Uh, it'll have similarities with other frameworks, but it will have its own solutions to, to common problems like making Ajax calls and dealing with the DOM and so on and so on. It's a topic for a whole other video. But uh, learning a JavaScript framework is huge. Do it. If you work in web dev at all, always a good idea to adopt another framework. I always say I think you should spend a half an hour every day with something new and a new JavaScript framework. Something that's going to get you paid is super, super important to you, to your future, your customers, your employers, and so on. So um, coming in at number two, JavaScript frameworks for the front end. That's it. And moving on to number one. And this... Number one for me is a little different than other lists, and like I said already, and I've said it in other videos, the emphasis for Motivated Code Pro is on consulting and contracting and the betterment of your career as a software development, and I feel like the number one programming language for 2018 and 2019 is the one you work in today, the one that's getting you paid. I think you need to go as deep as you can in what's gotten you this far Right? So if you're a JavaScript developer, that's, that's awesome. If you work in any of these other languages that, we've, that I've talked about, that's awesome too. If you need to adopt something on my top 10 or one of the other top 10s, I think that's great. But I think it's so important to value, you, value what's gotten as, you as far as you have. So go deep, not wide, you know, uh, learn as much as you can about what's getting you paid today. And when you focus on other languages and things that you want to learn, I really, really want you to have an eye toward what's going to get you paid, what's going to benefit your customers, what's going to keep you viable, right? And all of the language, languages we've listed and more fall into that category. So number one for me on the top 10 hit parade of languages for 2018 and 2019 is what's going to get you paid. Okay, so I'm Scott with MotivatedCodePro.com. Come to the website. We have compiled a list of 10 popular sites and their top 10 list, and we put that on a matrix. It's on the blog at MotivatedCodePro.com. The link is below. Um, like I said at the top, if you're new to me, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos. Again, Scott with Motivated Code Pro. Thanks for coming. Keep coming back.